Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Friday. And we are basically exactly two weeks away from the end of the month. So um, these are the animals that I currently have listed on Morph Market and their current sale prices. I have adjusted uh, quite a few of them to have uh, some new pricing. And most of these animals are at the best prices available for uh, what you currently can get them for. Uh, a lot of them are animals that you've never seen before. Um, so they're fantastic deals. Uh, they are, I'm really, really doing my best to be competitive with pricing and move inventory before the end of the month. I usually do this. It's probably going to be a staple every October here um, to do this because I don't like going into winter with a bunch of extra snakes that could be in new homes. Um, so all of these animals, um, except for the two adults, which might end up coming with free shipping anyways, but uh, they're all free shipping. So if you see one of these red prices, that's the price you're paying. Uh, there's no extra cost in shipping. Uh, most of them are double recessive. Um, I think the only one is the bottom right snake is that Ultramel bamboo combo. Everything else, I believe, is double recessive at least. Trip, there are triple recessives in here. There are doubles that are potential triple recessives, including Exanthic Clown Pied Projects. There's DG Clown Pied Projects. So, you know, shout out, uh, hit me up on Morph Market this weekend um, because these animals are, uh, you know, priced amazingly uh, at or below what anything else that's ever sold like them before. So, um, now the, part of the reason that I am doing this is because we're doing an unboxing here which is going to be the first unboxing that i've done in quite some time and that is because i spent most of the year here um you know not purchasing stuff i wanted to uh you know spend the year doing a really good job of producing some high quality animals and i was at the uh, point in time of uh, you know, my business where I needed to stop buying and start selling and start producing. However, uh, as I started selling more and more snakes this year and started looking at what was available, this snake became available and is quite simply the most expensive snake that I've ever purchased um, by far. Uh, it is from uh, Mark Bailey of Mark Bailey Reptiles. I believe he's over in Minnesota. He's been in the industry for a very long time. And this animal is going to take my uh, company and my projects to a completely other level that I never would have imagined. I never would have imagined I would have purchased a snake like this. I would have thought it would have had to have been something that I would have produced. Um, not something that I ever would have been able to purchase. So let me, but because I have had such a fantastic month and because I have so many things left to sell this month, um, it basically offset the cost of purchasing this. Um, let me get this cut off of here. There we go. So let's unveil this. Most expensive snake ever. Oh, wait. One more thing. The reason that I purchased this is because it is about 650 grams. It's over a year old and basically ready to breed at this point. So the females that I have ready for him uh, are going to be uh, basically ready to go. I plug him into my projects immediately and I'm not waiting to grow it up and to utilize the genetics of this guy. So, I've never seen this in person before. Man, does it look nice. So, this is a pastel desert ghost clown pied. It is a triple visual, triple recessive, triple visual snake. And as you can see, he has some awesome size to him. Let me weigh him real quick. Let's see if he's still in this to see his actual weight as he came here in the facility. 640 grams. So he's a year old. He's obviously an adult at this point. 
for a male, you know, it only takes a year to be an adult. Um, let me get him up. Let me see how far away I can get him here to showcase him. All right, there's probably good. Let's see if I can get him unraveled here a little bit. He's like, ah, it's cold, man. He went from Minnesota to Pittsburgh, and neither location is very warm right now. Come, buddy. Come on. There you go. Look at that. Now, pastel DG clowns actually look okay, especially when you mix them with other things, but it looks a lot different here in the pied version. Um, I don't love my pastel DG clowns. They don't look anything like what a pastel clown does. Um, but it actually makes a very beautiful yellow snake here. Now, let's talk strategy. I went into this year only having hets for the DG Clown project in a triple het DG Clown Pied Mail, which I have up for sale currently, as you can see, that produced my DG Clowns this season. Now, the reason I decided, hey, you know what? If I'm going to make a splash, I'm going to do it now, is my ability to take this mail and guarantee all three uh, recessive traits, the DG, the clown, and the pied. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can take him to any female and breed that. If I wanted to get new genes into this project, I could take him to a two, three, four, five gene female. Hopefully I hit some good odds. And then I have a, a three or four, five gene clown, double head DG pied. Makes it real easy to work those genes in. I can take him into my Lightning Clown Pied project and introduce Desert Ghost without even missing a step. Because if I take him to one of my Lightning Pied Het Clown females, half the babies should come out of there as being Clown Pieds. And all of those babies that are Clown Pieds are also 100% Double Het, MJ Exanthic, and Desert Ghost. Uh, I take him to my... DG clown females. I have three of them that haven't laid yet, and they're all about breeding size. He makes DG clown head pieds with every single one of them. One of those females is then she, the other two are pastel. Uh, I have a pied head DG female that I haven't had any luck breeding yet. DG pieds, head clown. I have a pied double head DG clown female that is just ready to breed. He makes it a lot easier to make triple recessives with that female. So, you know, like having a snake like this, and again, I put my money where my mouth is. I keep preaching to you guys to buy powerhouse males and to try to get visuals if possible. Um, if you can't, then at least get something with a couple hets that has a couple codoms in it, which is why the other male that I used earlier this year, the red stripe yellow belly leopard triple head DG clown pie was so important. Because even though I had crappy odds, I still made two DG clowns out of them. And I still made two triple recessive snakes out of them as well. And a bunch of double recessive snakes. So, you know, this is a game changer. Um, this is one of those purchases that five years ago I never would have imagined I would have made. I didn't really even have the ability to make a snake like this this year. I did. I had an outside chance, but I wouldn't have expected it. This would be the first triple visual recessive snake in my collection. And there were other ones available, um, but they were all tiny. They were all babies. They were not ready to go yet. Um, and this, to me, even though it doesn't have a bunch of codoms and it only has pastel, as you can see, pastel works pretty well in this combo. Um, and pic the pictures actually didn't do him justice. The, uh, I don't, I, he listed him in August for sale and I think he must have had recent pictures because they look similar but the the yellows in this guy and the blacks are just absolutely insane they don't they don't do him any justice at all so um these are the type of moves that that you have to make at some point instead of just kind of muddling around the same projects and the same purchases and the same uh value of snakes and Basically, I, I, I named him uh, Fort Knox because he's just literally a stack of gold for me at this point. Um, so hopefully you guys like the name I thought of that last night uh, before I got him here. So he's going to be busy once he settles in. Um, he's going to be a busy, busy boy. Um, he has, I mean, I have 
five, six females at this point that can make DG Pides. I also have my Super OD DG Head Pied female that I got from Ozzy last year that's ready to go that hasn't had locks with anybody. So I'm, I'm making triples and doubles with him like in two months. You know, like I want to get some more weight on him. I want to make sure he's, you know, through quarantine okay. Um, and then he's making me double and triple recessives left and right all day, every day. And eventually when he's done breeding those more expensive females, um, I can look into breeding him to pides or clowns or DGs that have a few extra genes in them so I can help introduce more genetics into the project as well. And that's why this is important. There's no guesswork. I don't need to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on genetic tests on my snakes. Um, I love, you know, Charlie at shedtesting.com, um, but I don't want to give him all of my money. And I have, I've probably spent $1,500 this year with him on shed testing. If I have this snake breeding to females, I don't need to test any of the babies because I know at the very worst, they're all hats. They're all triple hats. So this is huge. Um, this guy, as you can see, he's starting to warm up now a little bit. Um, getting a little more active, which is good. It's a good sign. He looks, looks amazing. Just a snake I never thought I would have. And hopefully he's making tons, tons of awesome babies for me. I start pairing him up in two months. I'm hoping I have some awesome clutches by the time spring rolls around that he produced. So, um, that's my way to, to end the week. It was a good present for me. Actually, this is Thursday that as I'm recording, this, as I picked them up. Um, and this is another reason why I am so aggressive at selling the snakes that I currently have for sale. Because uh, while what I've sold this month has already paid for him, I also need to turn a profit at some point and pay off my other debt. So, um, you know, it's all money. It's all business. And, you know, you need to do what you got to do to make it work for you. So that's why I've been so aggressive with everything else that I've uh, been selling. So... Uh, we have two weeks left in that sale. Um, the pricing on these snakes is the best in the market. I am very motivated seller. Um, I don't produce high quantities of animals. I just produce really nice animals and I don't hold on to them forever either, which is why you see me adjusting my prices constantly. Because if they're not selling, basically the way I look at it is I try to get it to the best price that makes somebody say, I need to buy it at that price. Right? It's not like I'm trying to steal money off anybody. It's not like I am trying to make people haggle with me. I want to get that snake to a price that says, somebody says, I got to buy that right now. I can't pass that up. And that's kind of been how I've dealt with, with selling these snakes. I, I might miss out on some money doing it that way, but I also um, have a bunch of customers I have a bunch of positive reviews because of it, and I have a growing business because of it. So, um, you know, I'm not undercutting the market. Typically, some of these snakes are at market value, a little below market value, but a lot of the snakes that I'm producing aren't on the market because a lot of them have had, you know, uh, het MJ Xanthic or POS het MJ Xanthic or triple recessive projects that aren't really being worked on. Um, so, you know, that's where we're at. This is a good way to end the week for me. I actually want to get him put away so he can start warming up a little bit. And we will see you guys on Monday. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Please hit me up if you saw anything. Go look at my Moore Park website if you see anything that's piques your interest because I have like 10, 11 listings on there now, but I've already sold like one and a half times or twice that. So they aren't going to stay on there forever. So if you see something, hit me up and we'll see you guys on Monday.